Today, we're gonna to be going through the four key areas that you can do to support your young one's success in their sport. So developing youth athletes is really becoming a big area in Australia and especially in Melbourne at the moment. It's becoming even more competitive. We're seeing kids getting larger, getting stronger, getting fitter compared to the, the previous counterparts of yesteryears. And now we're seeing more and more kids wanting to become professional athletes or international athletes or even collegiate athletes as well. Whilst this might actually sound good on paper, we actually wanna make sure that we're supporting them in the right ways moving forward. And there's a lot that actually occurs for this to actually happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the four key areas. Number one, we'll start off with the circle of support. When it comes to the circle of support, this idea or concept, it really talks about having a network of people around the athlete themselves. Basically, our goal is whoever is strength coach, physio, myotherapist, coach, their job is to provide their skill set specifically to help the athlete to get where they need to be. So you think of Giannis and his manager and also with Ariane Titmus and Dean Boxall. As an athlete, you want to make sure that you have someone who's on your side who is invested in you to see you actually grow. And the one thing that I've seen too many times is athletes get left behind because they don't have the right network or mentors around them to really support and foster their growth and development because the path of success is usually being carved already. The tips and tricks of those who have already been there and assisted others to, to get there can actually be translated quite nicely into your own success. So let's go into number two, winning versus developing. Now this is a really big one. Parents wanna get involved and wanna see their little ones win, kick four goals in an absolute blowout. But our problem with winning versus development is if we focus too much on the winning side really early on, they're more likely to become complacent in their development. So what that happens is every kid that comes through any sporting program will develop at different rates. Some kids are 16 years old, they already, they're already can play professional sport in some, some standards. Some kids are gonna be very late bloomers. Cody Walker, he's a really good example. He was 26 years old when he actually debuted for South Sydney Rabbitohs. And you got the other side of the spectrum, you have Israel Folau, I think he was 17 years old when he debuted for Melbourne Storm. Massive gap in terms of the development, but they also were able to play at that standard based on what their development was actually like. It's really important to see and to factor in that everyone is gonna grow and develop at their own rate. You're gonna get late bloomers and you're gonna get people that are gonna be early risers in their development and that's okay. Now with the development side as well, when kids actually learn to lose, they get to understand what worked and what didn't work. Now, this is a really important part in their development because eventually what works will no longer work at some point down the track. You cannot rely on the same strategies or the same routines or structures that you've relied upon because eventually it will only get you so far. And that's where losing comes into effect. Being a graceful loser, learning from your losses and using that as a form of development is gonna be really critical moving forward. And probably the last, the last part of this one is the development in Australia for athletes. Kids are bigger, kids are stronger, kids are faster. In AFL, you know, bloody Ruckman can play you know, full games now. They're fit, they're fast, they're strong. The game has actually changed where you gotta be, you gotta be fit, you gotta be fast, you gotta be strong at all positions now. Where AFL used to be a bit more specialized, where they're becoming a bit more generalized that everyone has to be fit, fast, and strong now. Our, our third point is specialization. So specialization is really just the idea is of specializing in one sport and going too early into that sport. Some of the best athletes in the world are actually dual sport studs. So Patrick Mahomes is a um, Super Bowl champion, played baseball when he was growing up, and the baseball throwing mechanics translated quite nicely in order, in order for him to play baseball. Tom Brady actually was a gun soccer player growing up as well. Then we also have Mason Cox. So for those who don't know who Mason Cox is, he is one of the Ruckman at Collingwood Football Club. He actually has a basketball background. His vertical jump actually leaned towards him being someone who can get the high ball and someone who can help win those, um, those taps in the middle as well. So, 
that there's a huge correlation of some sports and the characteristics of those sports being translated across and towards going other sports. Basketball is a really great sport in order to have a lot of crossover into a lot of field-based sports. I think this is one of the best sports to have. It teaches hand-eye coordination. And I think soccer is a really good sport as well. It really does teach hand-eye coordination, change of direction ability. I think those are the two key sports um, if you're gonna get your kids to play or invest their time into other sports, they should be playing those sports as well. But if you want your kids to become really developed overall, especially starting at a young age, swimming is usually a good sport because we live, in, we live in an island in Australia. It's always helpful to swim. The second part is, is gymnastics. Gymnastics really teaches coordination, motor skill, motor development. Um, it's one of those kind of like areas where you don't really understand until you do it. And there's a huge correlation and transfer of those skills um, later on into other sports, which we've seen here. We've got a, quite a few girls that train here that are swimmers, and they were actually gymnasts um, back in a previous life, and it's actually served them quite well for swimming because they do have a lot of strength and motor control. And the other sport we like is track and field. Track and field teaches running, jumping, and throwing, and these are the three key areas in pretty much every single sport that you do need to be quite proficient in. Running, we, don't, we know that's important for all field-based sports, unless you play a sport like ice hockey or something like that, or more winter-based sports. Throwing, we know throwing is important for anything that requires a ball. Then jumping, a majority of sports do require some level of jumping, especially if you're playing on a larger field and you're playing in a sport where there's lots, um, lots of movement required as well. Number four, now this is the one where I have the biggest problem with at the moment. So load management, burnout and overuse. Now this idea that we should get these kids playing as much physical sport as possible, yes, I think that's good to a point. Now, as someone who has been burnt out, especially coming back from an injury as well with training, it's really important that we're actually managing the kids through the whole process in their development. Every, everything from basically when they first start their sport all the way to the, um, when they get to the professional level as well. We want to be managing it to the point where they're not spending a majority of their time in there. They do have some time away to be themselves, be able to chill out because we don't want them to be specifically identified as a sport. Now, the critical age of understanding these ideas is really between that 14 to 16 year old age when they're making that transition from like more the junior age and start making their way up until more the, more the open age when things start to become a bit more serious whether or not they know that they're really good to get to the next level. Now, at this age, the kids were gonna, are gonna think more like, I need to do more training, more of this, more of this, more of this. Now, if we think of more of the bucket analogy, now one of our coaches, Nathan, he's really good at explaining this, but imagine we have different buckets, right? And there's only so much capacity these buckets have um, in terms of how much time and energy you should be putting into them. If you're putting too much energy into one, one bucket, then that's actually gonna leave the other buckets neglected and where your development could be spent better else somewhere. So think of you're spending so much time on your sport, maybe you need to do a bit more time on your strength training because you feel like you're getting broken down from your training. So you need to get stronger for the sport. Or if you're doing those two really well, but you're still feeling tired and fatigued, you probably need to spend more time on that recovery side. So there is multiple things that are happening at once. It's a, it's a lot more complex when you break it down, but it can be quite simplified um, in a way where if you start to see the kids regressing, the kids should be just progressing pretty much year to year. If they start to regress, then there is something going on and that needs to be reassessed in terms of how much training, how much time they have. At the end of the day, they're still in school as well. So that's something we have to consider. Stress from school, stress from COVID, staying at home, lack of physical activity as well. We just gotta make sure that, that they're becoming more well-rounded so when they do get to the top levels, they can really specialize in their sport specifically. We've just discussed the four problems that parents need to know about in order to really support their kids for long-term success. So to briefly summarize, so the four key points that we've gone through, number one is really having that circle of support, surrounding the kid for their success. Everyone has their specific skill set they apply in order to get the kid to the next level. Second point is winning versus developing. It's okay to win, but we need to make sure that we're still developing at the same time as well. We're not resting on what we know because at the professional level, it, the standard just cranks up to another level. The third point is specialization. 
We don't want them specializing too early in their careers. We want to make sure that they're playing multiple sports too, even when they're 14, 15, 16, then they can later on down the track, they can really start to specialize and they're going to peak a lot later and at a higher level as well. So you're just trying to delay the growth. And then the last point is, is really just the, the burnout, the load management. If we understand what they're doing on a daily basis, we can make sure that we're spreading, spreading everything out and we're focusing on the areas that are really gonna help them to move forward. More sport is not necessarily the answer in this case, so you gotta make sure we're looking after the other areas of their development. If you found this really valuable and you wanna know more about our services and programs, go to the link below to our website and you can find more information about what we do to help the parents, but also the kids get to where they need to be long-term.